Welcome to New Life is Gift to Us, a weekly Bible study that I would like to invite you to participate in. My name is Jackie Stewart, and we will be discussing the topic of faith. And the text scripture that we will be starting off from is found in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 26 through 27. And I'll be reading you uh, these scriptures in the King James Version of the Bible. And it says, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, and we're speaking of God's righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Verse 27, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works. Nay, but by the law of faith. So today we will be discussing laws, and that a law is something that works all the time, every time, for everyone, whether you know about the law, whether you believe in the law, a law will work. And we see in, in the scripture that there is a law of works, and there is a law of faith. And we will be discussing the law of faith in this part two series. And what I'd like to uh, start off with is to tell us uh, to discuss something about God. We know then that God created everything in uh, six days and on the seventh day he looked at all the works that he, has do he had done and he says it is good and he is resting. And we can see in Isaiah chapter 46 another description of God and this is what he's telling you and me. It says, remember the former things of old for I am God and there is none else I am God, and there is none like me. Verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So we see then that God declares the end from the beginning. He determines what it is that he wants, and from the very beginning he declared it. And it says, his voice shall go forth, and it shall accomplish that for which he sent it. And because God is not a respecter of persons, he established physical laws, he established spiritual laws, that if you and I participate in those laws, we can decree our prosperity in life. Not, phys not just, physical, not just um, financial prosperity, but health-wise, mental-wise, relationship-wise, safety and perseverance. Her preservation. And discussing this topic with me today is Richard Stewart, pastor of New Life for Old Christian Church. And he and I will be going into God's Word, delving into it to find out about faith, which without faith you cannot please God. So, Pastor Stewart, this is very important, right? It's as important as anything we could study from God's Word. Right. Because it really is about how we're to live as children of God. Mm -hmm. In Romans chapter 1, verse 17, well, I'll start reading in verse 16. It says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, there in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So he's telling us, if we're justified by faith, <coughs> and that's what it says in the third uh, chapter that you were reading our text scripture from, the next verse, verse 28 says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So he's saying the righteous shall live by faith, mm -hmm. and that we are justified or made righteous by faith. Now, the reason we're studying this is because faith is a law. The law of faith. That law has to work all the time, every time, for everybody the same way. Else God is a liar. God told us, he said, I'm not a man that I should lie, mm -hmm. or the son of man that I should repent, have to turn around and go back. So if we can take this, get to a point that we believe what he said, Faith is synonymous with the Word of God. We can have faith in what He said, mm -hmm. because His Word and faith are synonymous. Now taking this, we want to get to a point where we can take this information and this knowledge and apply it to our lives the same way Jesus applied it as an example for us. And what He did, He said, I only do the things that my Father 
does. Mm -hmm. And he created the whole world, you said, by speaking. So he's saying, if my father could do that, I can do that. And if he could do it, he told us greater works than what he did could we do, then that means that we can do and create things through our words. If our words are the words of God. Mm -hmm. That's where Jesus came to us. I can't do anything of myself. We can't do anything of ourselves that we want to create in a positive way in our lives. But we can find God's word on it. We can have faith for it. And then we can speak it. And this is the process that we were coming up to in our last, in our last lesson, was that this process starts with hearing the word, because faith comes by hearing. Right. Then after we hear the word, when it says hearing, it means repeatedly. Not faith comes from having heard. So someone keeps telling you something. It, it works in the natural, too. Mm -hmm. You just keep telling a lie. You make up a lie and repeat it over and over and over again. After a while, you'll have faith for the lie that you made up, right. and you know it's a lie. It's the way that we were created. So God is saying, if you use this, that you were created in a positive way, you get a hold of words that are full of life and full of power, His words, the, His words created the whole universe. He said, now, if you will keep hearing that until you have faith for it, and once you have faith for it, you will say it, and faith-filled words have the power to bring themselves to pass. And um, we know then that to, to, to our faith, we have to b believe it and not doubt in our heart, and then we have to speak it. Faith is actually saying something, it's not thinking something. You have to say something, and then you have to remain in faith until what it is that you're standing in faith for manifests itself here in the physical realm. I want to address that. Okay. And address it from the scriptures in Romans chapter 10, starting in verse number 8. It says, no, verse 6, it says, But the righteousness which is of faith, that's what we were just talking about, speaketh on this wise. It says, this is the way righteous people are supposed to speak, the ones that are supposed to live by faith, he said in his word. He says, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. We don't need to do that. Mm -hmm because he's given us the authority now to do it. He says, or, he says or, who shall descend to the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead? Well, if you still believe that he's dead, you're not going to have faith in him. Right. Right? He's saying, how do people that are righteous, how do they speak? That's what this is talking about. And in verse 8 it says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, the word of faith. Mm -hmm. which we preach. What we're doing right now is preaching the word of faith, the word of God. Every word of his is a word of faith. Faith is a law that works all the time, every time for everybody. Now, unfortunately, the church has focused in on the next two verses and narrowed down the meaning to where part of the meaning has almost been lost. It says in verse 9, it says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, this is just saying, mm -hmm. not confessing sin, it's just saying, the Lord Jesus, or the Word of God, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, here's what we've limited this to mean, I'll miss hell and make heaven. Mm -hmm. But salvation means much more than that. Salvation means prosperity and health and healing and preservation and protection. It's the whole... It's all of life that men, men desires. Everything. Restored relationships. The very word righteousness. It, it, it's talking about nothing missing, nothing broken in your life when you're prospering at that, at that level. It says, now, if you take this and don't limit it to this narrow scope of salvation, which is great, uh -huh. when we narrow it to the scope of salvation, meaning missing hell and making heaven. But what about going from sickness to health. Right. Can I find a word? It says, now, if I'm going to live from faith to faith, I'm going to find a word that says I'm healed. I'm going to confess it, because I'm going to confess it with my mouth, till I believe it in my heart. I'm not going to believe it till I keep hearing it, because faith comes by hearing. Now, once I continue to confess it, 
to it. Believe it in my heart. Faith-filled words, this is the law of faith, have the power to bring themselves to pass. Now, how long do I confess it? Till you act upon it. And start speaking it and see the manifestation of it. Right. And